Okay, hi girls and guys, it's Lady Illyria here. We're still playing Dysfunctional Systems. We are still in the pub. I don't think I've gone anywhere else other than the pub yet. Uh, whilst we're in the pub, we are chatting to this random guy named David. This is the main character, Winter. At least I'm assuming I don't turn into someone else later on, who knows? And uh, we're trying to find out what is going on in this world. So let's carry on. David says, hell, I'm not surprised. They practically skipped over that in schools. Give it a paragraph, maybe. Sure, they tell you Brighton used to be Gabrian, uh, Gabrian? Hmm. Gabrian colony. Then we gained our independence 120 years ago. They just never mentioned the costs of that freedom. Economic sanctions, crazy ones. Oh, he had gaspy face. I mean, they weren't always crazy. Back then, minimum wage could feed you and more. The sanctions haven't changed though. Haven't adjusted with the dollar's value and cost of living. Oh, good to know they use dollars in this ever world. We screwed up, got lulled into a false sense of liberty, got so caught up in the things we could do, we forgot that we what we can't. Thanks to this inflation, these sanctions are making us so poor that they're killing us. I mean, literally killing us. Shock face again. <laughs> Not a great thing to bring up when there's something to celebrate, but I don't even think they're tracking just how many have died trying to live. I know I've definitely lost count. Then, is this the route? I mean, it sure does su suck that these people are poor. Really? Though honestly, if they've been this way for that long, they should be used to it. Hmm, what is poor exactly? The television was harping on about it earlier. And David is harping on about it now, so I figured it must be important, but, you know, it's nonsense to even consider this seriously. Wow, so far stuck up her own ass. I don't understand any of this. The obsession over the economy. The excitement over higher wages. None of it makes sense. Poor is not having enough for a snack. Money is a trivial thing. Yep, definitely stuck up her own ass. Another thing that is not even a major society of this world. That being the case... How come we're dealing with this at all? And Cyrus, Cyrus, what was he thinking dragging me here? He probably only wanted a drink. What can I learn about a whole world from just one person? Not much. Ugh, this is stupid, stupid. Ugh. It must be something else. If it's so terrible here, I wonder how it is in Gabriria. Complete luxury, they live like kings. Even their <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Even their bums live better than us. What? That is filthy. A filthy thing to say. It's a damn miracle any of them work at all. With how much they get for free. They get fired. The state takes care of it. They're hurt. The state takes care of it. No job to start with. The state. The state will do go to the goddamn moons for his precious Gabirians. Oh, I'm going to jump up and down. Can you believe it? People are starving here, and it's that kind of fucking bullshit that... I wince and raise my shoulders a little. Oh, sorry. It's okay. <coughs> I don't really take any offence to swear words or rude language, but my dad was never terribly fond of them. I have grown unused to their bite, the harsher ones anyway. It's a bit shocking to hear one in that tone. How else do you fucking hear it? I decide to look back at the television, feeling embarrassed on David's behalf for reasons beyond my immediate comprehension. It airs to the same spot on for all four seconds before cutting out. When the picture returns, a twisty and into it crest, a duck flying over a sword and pickaxe look like, appear on the screen, set against a noble blue <gasps> blue screen of death. Could this be the team logo? An address to the audience from the coaching captain? Ooh, I want to see. I lean back a few feet from the counter until I'm supporting myself only slightly with my fingers and mostly with the soul's two head uh, hind legs. Hmm. Honestly, the warmth of that beer has not completely dis dissipated. David, what is that? It's a quite annoying beeping sound. Holly. George, turn it up. That must be the bar taker. Tender, not taker. The person who was wiping glasses behind the counter raises his eyebrow slightly and then reaches listenly for the remote. When it's in his hands, he turns and he gives the television a tired glance. The crest on the screen wakes his eyes immediately and he is soon mashing the volume up. 
I hear David shifting at my right, and it sounds as though he's turning in the direction of Cyrus and the other man. Clark, get over here. I have images of Sub-Zero. Was it Scorpion? Scorpion, yes. Scorpio? Scorpion. Scorpion, yes. Sorry. Anyway. Oh, so that's the man's name. Clark. Very posh. Clark and Cyrus look at David strangely and then strangely look at one another and then they begin rushing over. I find their antics confusing and unwarranted. What is the big deal over this? Oh, isn't it pretty? In a few moments, the whole gaggle of men surrounds the television. Even the waiter has stopped cleaning tables to watch. I know that sports are popular and all, but isn't this a little bit too much? Oh, the television. This is an emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. Please pay close attention to the following message. You're all fucked. Oh. The message will begin in 40 seconds. This is an emergency bro... Oh, come on. I don't want to repeat the same words. I just read that. We're going again. And now it's going to be in 30 seconds. Goodness. Th th this is it, isn't it? It, the thing, the problem. Oh, no. No, I'm not ready for this. Cleaning up garbage is one thing, but this is completely another thing. And I don't even know what exactly. Yeah. I searched Cyrus's eyes. Oh, hi, Cyrus. How have you been? For something to comfort my spirit. <laughs> He's not going to comfort you, sweet. <laughs> comfort my spirits. But I find nothing and do not know what, why I'm bothered at all. His face is an indescribable ah, as ever. Aside from the serious brow and lip, of course. Doesn't really look like it. The message will begin in ten seconds. Crap! The message will play now. <sighs> she has no eyes. Or very small eyes. Or it could be a boy. I'm not sure. The crest vanishes, revealing... Oh, it is a man. The crest vanishes, revealing a man in a suit at a desk. A dapper brown suit. Oh, dapper. And a large brown desk. I imagine he must be important, because he has nice clothes on, and that is all my character cares about. As the crest from before, it's quite brazenly carved into the wood of his furniture. As for the man himself, he looks older than Cyrus, which is ancient at worst and aged 60 at least. He looks very tired. His face is worn and his expression does nothing for the mood. He does have some fake looking hair though. That's pretty funny. I almost have a small chuckle, but given the severe expressions of my of my company, I decide it would be best to stifle it. Oh, he looks mad. Brighton, Brighton, we have endured. As a people, as a country, as a workforce, we have endured these past 120 years. I bet you have not. You're not that old. Surely, surely you are all very, very tired. I, my people, my friends, am very, very tired. The word sovereign, sovereign even, meant little to me before this, but I completely understood it at the moment. The way this man carries himself, his speech and his dour voice were all combined to chill the warmth from my head. I sat my stool back down and had an actual seat, looking up at the monitor. Was certain intensely the man has me engaged. I'm tired of the media portraying our common man for the fool, an ignorant sort all too good, all too glad to do the deeds of its betters. Tired of these foreign companies providing us work and wages that we are that we will celebrate for only pennies more. Tired of hearing many people say in passing and enormously, no, I do not know if we will eat today, perhaps tomorrow. Brighton, I am tired of our masters. I am so, so tired. People of Brighton, we have grown so used to freedom, we've forgotten that we are not free. This chair and this desk, the stage of an office I which I play my part, is evidence of that. Hmm. I offer a serious and composed look at Cyrus. If I'm understanding correctly, and I can't say I am one for understanding much of anything of this world, it seems like this leader here is not as much of a leader as he might like. Which, frankly, I just don't get. The way leadership works back home, at least on the large scale, is that several especially intelligent and responsible people rule over all of us. Oh, is my game about to crash? My fellow Americans. <laughs> you cut it out, yeah. They're like, no, you cannot watch this. You cannot hear. No, we will not talk about it. Oh, we have crashed. We have stopped the conspiracy. Shush, <laughs> shush, I'm recording. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to call it there then, guys. Um, we're going to find out what the president <laughs> wants to say next time. My fellow Brian, Shush, I'm, I'm recording. <laughs> Clearly the um, Gabradians, whatever they're freaking called, don't want the president to speak to us. So but we'll find out next time. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you have any comments about how much this game crashes, you know, please carry on commenting. And um, if you're enjoying the series, please subscribe. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Vote Brian.